After and the birth of Homeland Security, fusion centers were set up to monitor U.S. citizens, and the U.S. Department of Justice legalized non-consensual experiments on the public. These fusion centers employ civilians to target individuals and harass them, intimidate them, vandalize their property, and interfere with their day-to-day life. This is known as gang stalking. Former high-ranking FBI agent Ted Gunderson reported in 2011 that himself and thousands of others were being targeted. FBI agent Mike German confirmed this as well. Several federal agents have reported that they were targeting individual Americans, including people who were simply pro-life, and that they were pressured to put more people on their targeting lists to legitimize more federal funding. These Homeland Security fusion centers are able to put any American citizen on the watch list without any reason or due process. In 2012, NSA whistleblower William Binney reported that the feds are conducting comprehensive surveillance on nearly every U.S. citizen and targeting whomever they please. In 2014, Glenn Greenwald exposed the methods used to target individuals such as hacking into people's social media accounts, posing as that person, and contacting their friends and co-workers. TargetedJustice.com is currently working on suing the federal government for targeting individual U.S. citizens with different high-tech weapons, including directed energy weapons. The Havana Syndrome, when diplomats in Cuba were attacked with directed energy weapons, was not an isolated event. There are thousands of individuals who claim to be under this same sort of attack, and they have the scars to prove it. As far back as 1976, the technology to remotely alter brainwaves has existed, including voice-to-skull technology that allows the government to directly transmit voices into people's brains. As bad as all this is, it is likely to get much worse. In 2017, Dr. James Giordano gave a lecture on the latest government technologies to target individuals, such as neuroweapons to control brain function and modify memories. I'm looking to target key individuals who may then be influential to relative aspects of their representative groups. I can affect individuals' brain functions in a variety of different ways, both positively and negatively, by engaging or disengaging nodes and networks of the brain that therefore affect their cognitions, emotions, and ultimately their behaviors. Something my colleague Jamie Canton likes to play with an awful lot is the idea of specialized neural operations. And here, once again, we're talking about the use of either drugs and or devices to modify the integrity of brain function that we realize can also modify individuals' perception of time and space. We talked earlier about how these may be used in interrogation scenarios, and this too may be used against key individuals to be able to modify their perception of time, their perception of what occurred and what did not, memory modification, etc. Nanoparticulates that can give an individual a stroke. So what we're able to do here is infiltrate the brain space with nanoparticulate matter that aggregates in situ, on site in the brain, and does one of two things, either penetrates from the vascular space, gets in through the bloodstream, gets in through the nose, through the mucosa, or infiltrates the vascular space and clogs it. What is the result? What's called a nanoparticulate stroke or a hemorrhagic diathesis, fancy word, for it's a predisposition to individuals having brain bleeds. He explains how they can make people sick with an undetectable illness to make them go crazy. What I'm doing is I'm using a dispersion methodology to be able to infect sentinel cases with a highly morbid condition. These individuals complain. Again, this is a central nervous system condition. So they're complaining of whatever the bug may do. It'll produce some cascade of neurological and neuropsychiatric signs and symptoms. What I've now done is I've got every individual who is diagnostically hypochondriacal, and I've got every individual who's the worried well flooding the public health system, banging on the door. The CDC comes back and says, nonsense, that's not real. I come back and say, That's fake news. He says they can already control insects. I infiltrate that bug's nervous system and I control the way it moves. By controlling the way it moves, I control the way it goes. I control the wings pattern. I control where it hovers, where it flies, where it articulates. And what I can also do is I can then couple this to a very, very small scale set of either biosensors or cameras. And what I basically have here is a biodrone. 
I can go one step further and I can also impregnate that individual, that individual organism, with a very small scale weaponizable delivery mode. In other words, if I'm using a very, very small scale bio such as a very potent organotoxin or the delivery of a very small level of microbes that we know can either replicate and infect or is genetically modified to have a very, very high morbidity effect, I can then utilize this not only as a reconnaissance drone, but also as an infiltrative weaponizable drone that can then deliver some payload. Immediately following the death of Nikola Tesla, Dr. John Trump, an electrical engineer with the National Defense Research Committee of the Office of Scientific Research and Development, and interestingly, President Donald Trump's uncle, was called in to analyze the Tesla papers. After only three days, John Trump officially concluded that Tesla's work was primarily speculative and did not include workable methods. We are then told that most of Tesla's papers disappeared but his work most definitely quietly continued. Heavily funded military projects studying the Tesla particle beam are reported, but more interesting than that is the mystery of systems in rotation, spin. Although everything down to the electron seems to be spinning, there is no official study on the science of spin or rotation, but there are fragments and clues that suggest major governments have been secretly studying the science of rotation ever since World War II, calling it hyperdimensional physics or torsion physics. Bruce De Palma's spinning ball experiment from 1977 is simple enough for anyone to repeat. Two steel balls are repeatedly launched with equal force. One is spinning, the other is not. The spinning ball consistently flies higher and falls faster than the other. This is in direct violation of both Newton's laws and Einstein's relativity. Modern science cannot account for this energy. The top secret so-called Nazi Bell project allegedly involved two counter-rotating cylinders and produced anti-gravity UFO-like effects. And now the US Navy appears to be going public with this science. They claim to control inventions that change the fabric of reality. A mysterious Dr. Salvatore Cesar Paez has filed four patents of which the US Navy is the assignee. They appear to be technology for what we would popularly describe as UFOs. And they are all based upon harvesting energy from the spinning of electromagnetic fields. These patents look very similar to what whistleblowers claim have been in production for years by weapon manufacturers such as Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. The same UFO-like craft that whistleblowers claim are being prepared to stage a fake alien invasion. After decades of deep misinformation, secrecy, and corruption, why bring this powerful technology out into the open today? The chief technical officer of the Naval Aviation Enterprise claims that the U.S. needs these patents because the Chinese are already investing significantly in these technologies. So are they rolling all this out into the public to prepare us for a space age war with China? The subtext to all this, of course, is that there is no energy crisis, only more lies and deceit.